hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com my name's jason newland and this is daily hypnosis session number something not sure what number it is number six maybe number seven Anyway, although it's a daily hypnosis session, I've not been very successful at doing them every day. So the daily hypnosis session isn't daily, which is the, you know, I was hoping for it to be daily. But the, the good side is I am pretty much making one, at least one session every day of different things. So yesterday I did a Let Me Boy You To Sleep number 49, I think it was. And I got an itchy back. Oh. So, yeah, it's, it's okay. I'd like, um, I had problems with the internet last night and it took about three to four hours to upload yesterday's video to YouTube which meant I couldn't do anything else I couldn't even use the phone during that period because it was if you touch it or do anything with it it interrupts the the uh, upload stream or whatever you want to call it flow connection so I've got the internet fixed I hope so I might do a let me boy to sleep later on, maybe in another hour or two. So that's it. In case you're wondering why I do a little chat and talk to you um, before getting on with the actual session, it's partly because I want to. Um, partly because it's just, this is how it's progressed, I guess, over the years. Can you believe this is how it's progressed too? Imagine what it was like before. And I class the people, that, the fans or the, the viewers, uh, listeners to my sessions that have been following me for years or re just recently even. Thank you to the recent subscribers. And... It's nice to get to know people a little bit, you know, to know that uh, I'm not just a robot, I'm not just this, um, I just come on and say, now close your eyes, you will now imagine yourself moving down some stairs, one, two, three, four, five, and when you get down to the stairs, you'll feel ten times more relaxed. <laughs> I look like a Muppet, don't I? So I do try and just be a human being, uh, which we all are, after all. And it's very conversational, what I do. Not always, you know, I can do traditional stuff, but... Uh, I know that in the past I had a few messages and your comments saying, why don't you just get on with it? But I need to direct them to maybe having more patience or a sort of relaxation session or something because uh, if you want me to get on with it, then you need to pay me. You know, if you came to see me in person I wouldn't be talking for 10 minutes or 20 minutes, but I would, there'd be a conversation, but you know, I'd be focusing on a specific thing that you were looking to do, but then you'd be able to communicate back with me and tell me what it is that you intend to gain from this particular interaction with me. But of course we can't do that in these situations. So, and also each, daily hypnosis session you get to know me a little bit and 
between sessions. Maybe I get to know you a little bit by the comments that you leave. And I think there's the flavor. And if you've listened to or watched previous daily hypnosis sessions, the recent ones, you get that, that link that's within all of the sessions, the link of safety, feeling safe, the benefits of feeling safe, the getting in touch with who you are as a person, the feelings of questioning, maybe not just accepting what was or how you used to think about things or maybe how you were taught to think about things by others in your life, to maybe start thinking differently and opening up possibilities for change for you that are particular to you. And I don't know if you heard that, but my stomach just went, it's like I just swallowed a kitten, but I haven't. But it's my Stomach doesn't normally make that kind of a noise. So that's what these daily hypnosis sessions are for. It's about opening yourself up to the possibilities of new thinking, new ideas. Maybe even older ideas. perhaps questioning, as I said, things that perhaps are not as useful to you as you once thought they were. So I do go over and over again the concepts of ideas and thinking about things and how you experience yourself, how you view yourself and this is quite repetitive at times I try to make it a little bit different each time and I don't necessarily say the same thing in exactly the same way but sometimes I might say the same thing exactly the same way but other times I might not and therefore doesn't really matter because the underlying feeling is how you feel that's the main thing is how you experience yourself and how you experience me the connection that you can gain in this moment and the ultimate question at the end is how do you feel do you feel a sense of change that may may be subtle? Do you feel more relaxed than you did before you decided to listen to my voice? Do you feel a bit more open to possibilities for your future, for your life? for your happiness, more options that have always been there that maybe you hadn't noticed before. It's like you've opened a cupboard in the kitchen and you've realized there's something at the back of the cupboard that you didn't, you'd forgotten was there. Maybe a packet of biscuits or a bar of chocolate, something that you just just a nice little surprise and I I forgot that was there. That's been in there for weeks. And you can choose, you can have some of that chocolate or not. You can have some of those, maybe make a cup of tea or a cup of coffee and have some of those biscuits or not. It's your choice and that's the main thing that's always prevalent within these sessions is choice. 
you choose whether or not you press the play button on the video, which is what you did. You choose whether you listen to this on a podcast or uh, if you download it from my website. That's your choice. You choose to do that. And when you choose something, it gives you the power. And I know that hypnosis, there's this uh, idea that hypnosis is all about somebody controlling another person and you lose all your power and you're subject to my will and I tell you what to think and what to feel. But that's not how this works. This is about opening up possibilities that are already there or may already be there. Ideas that perhaps you thought about but maybe not really given enough attention to those possibilities which may improve your life, change your life for you and your loved ones, for your mental happiness, for your physical well-being, may even financially. So what this is about is you. And before we start, I always do a big long introduction for some reason. But before we start, I'd like you to make sure that you only watch or listen to these, any of my recordings or videos, when you can safely close your eyes. Just in case you get a bit bored and just want to go to sleep or something, but this isn't here, I'm not here to make you go to sleep. This is focusing, this is awareness. Because hypnosis isn't sleep. Hypnosis can lead to sleep. So hypnosis can be used to increase sleepiness and, you know, to help the sleeping and I've been doing that for many years. Not just sleeping myself but you know helping other people to sleep. And I do that with the Let Me Bore You to Sleep sessions. But there's also sleep hypnosis ones that I've done as well. But this isn't this isn't that. This is focusing on my words and noticing what happens, what the reaction is inside your mind, inside your body. Notice the physical responses that you experience when listening to my voice and my words. Because they're no longer just my words, they're our words. It's like we're at a movie we're watching a film and we're sharing that film. It's not my film, it's not your film, it's our film. We're watching that movie together. We're experiencing this moment together. And it's a conversation. And even though you're not verbally communicating with me in a way that I can hear you, you may be saying something, you may be telling me to shut up, you may be telling me to have a shave, trim my beard, I don't know. You may be saying, tell me what a wonderful glasses I have. And yeah, I have got new glasses, I've got them recently, thanks for asking. But there is a communication because I talk, you listen, I also listen to what I'm saying and you have 
an emotional reaction or physical reaction. And I also have an emotional reaction and a physical reaction to what I'm saying because it's also affecting me. Affecting you, affecting me. And it's that energy, that connection. And just because it's on the internet and just because you may be hundreds or thousands of miles away from me, maybe the other side of the world, you may be asleep right now while I'm actually filming this. And you may be watching this in a year's time. It doesn't matter because that connection is there. That connection, that emotional, that nice kindness, feeling of safety. I feel that feeling of safety, that transparency, because by listening to me, you've given, your, given me permission to talk to you. So I take that permission seriously and my aim is to focus the conversation, the topic, the ideas in such a way that you and your mind is stimulated perhaps differently to how you may have been stimulated before. It's, just a, it's a little bit different. Different from a normal conversation with a friend or family member. It's a different because although it's one way, it's not one way because you have an opportunity to experience those feelings without the need to reply, without the need to verbally interact. And you can do it with your eyes closed. And that's quite difficult to do that if you're in a conversation with someone and they tell you something that maybe it feels really good inside. And maybe they uh, pay you a compliment or they say something to you that you didn't realise before, you hadn't thought about, hadn't realised just how attractive you are to the world how many great qualities you have yourself, how kind you are. So someone says that to you and if you're in a conversation with that person, there's that pressure to talk and to communicate back, maybe thank them and carry on with the conversation instead of just sitting there and closing your eyes and just enjoying those emotions that are stimulated by those words that you've heard, those true words, those, some people call them compliments, but you can give them whatever title you choose. I like to think of it as being the truth instead of a compliment, an acknowledgement. Instead of someone complimenting you on how kind you are. They're acknowledging how kind you are. They're just facing the facts. Facing the truth pointing out in some ways the obvious but you may not be aware of what that obvious is from another person's perspective in the same way as you may see qualities in a friend or a loved one that perhaps they don't appreciate about themselves or maybe they're not aware of those qualities 
that they possess. And I would say that perhaps we all have that going on within us. We've all got things about us that we perhaps don't realize just how much we've helped others. That's one thing that I've, I repeat this, I do. I'll probably, I'll be repeating this till I'm 95 years old. And I may have a very different voice by then. But I repeat this, I say, you know, you don't know how many people that you've helped. You're never gonna know how many people you've helped. Just a smile, just a, a bit a word of encouragement maybe to somebody that you work with. Maybe it's their first day at work and it might be as simple as telling someone how to log into the computer or it could be absolutely anything could be a small thing to you, but to them, it might be a really big thing. It might be a difference between them walking away out of that job and staying. It, you know, it could be an amazing difference to their life. So we all have an impact on others, whether we like it or not. And I like the idea that there are people in the world that you have affected in such a, a wonderful way that you've actually You've contributed to the transformation of their life. Maybe you've contributed towards the direction of their life. Some people might not even have children and a family if it hadn't been for meeting you. You know, you may have introduced them to a friend who then introduces them to another friend and they go out and they meet someone that night and you're not anything to do with it but had you not introduced them to your friend and they got on then they would never have gone on to perhaps meeting that person that they meet and then having children and maybe having a, a wonderful life that they've always wanted. Someone might have the dream job because of something, some encouragement that you said that you gave to them. There might be someone who's 35 and I think I, I remember saying to someone, um, I think they were about 26, 27, and they were saying to me, oh, it's too late, can't go to university or anything like that, I'm not 18 anymore and I can't do that stuff. And I said, I said to them, well, I didn't get my degree till I was 40. I don't know if they went on and got a degree. You know, I've no idea what the, what the outcome of that conversation was. they might have done they might have thought oh this this old geezer he's he's he got a degree at his age he's nearly 50 now perhaps there is time perhaps those limitations that we put on ourselves or we allow other people to put on our us 
perhaps we don't have to do that. So if you were about to go out, if you think of limitations like a hat, like a big, loud, flowery, pink, rainbow hat. If you think of the, the hat that you would never ever want to be seen in. So I should change my description because that might be a hat that would suit and you'd like to wear. So if you think of a hat that you would never ever, ever wear, you know, it could be, um, it could be anything. It could be a political slogan that you very much disagree with. You know, just as an example. So that's somebody else's limitations. And they've put that hat on your head. So before you go out in the morning or in an hour's time, whatever you're doing today or tomorrow, and you're about to go out maybe to work or to the supermarket, maybe to the laundrette, maybe to a family dinner, perhaps to school, college, university, uh, you know, the, the list is endless. You, you go in somewhere, maybe it's a wedding, and someone put that hat on your head. Would you go out in that hat? Would you go to that family occasion with that hat on your head? Would you go to work wearing that hat? Would you leave your home and walk through your front door, out of your front door, on into the public, wearing that hat? I'm guessing the answer is no. I'm hoping the answer is no. If it's against your values, if it's something that hat doesn't fit how you, if it doesn't feel right and you're not happy with it, So you can think of that in the same way as limitations, other people's opinions and limitations. In a sense, isn't that what we're doing? We're walking around wearing that big floppy hat. It doesn't have to be floppy. It can be erect. It could be, it could be have um, feathers. You know, there could be a, a trombone sticking out the top. You know, however you want the hat to be. I don't want to get too caught up in the hat, but I seem to be getting quite caught, caught up in the, the visual side of that hat, of other people's limitations, that other people are putting that hat on your head and have been doing that since you were very young. But because the hat's invisible, we just carry on but the limitations are still there. Other people's opinions, other people's prejudices. Things that are limiting you, that's the point. How is that fair that somebody else's thoughts and opinions and beliefs should limit your happiness? In what way is that fair? In what way is that acceptable? Answers on a postcard to Jason in England, the hat competition. Winners, winner, free pencil sharpener so the point is you wouldn't wear that hat I know I wouldn't yeah I probably no I wouldn't I wouldn't wear it so I wouldn't wear that hat of other people's limitations I wouldn't wear the hat anyway whatever it represented if I didn't like it So the idea of someone else 
not even trying to limit you, but just sometimes it's, um, they're not even aware that they've done it. Sometimes they're not even aware that they've, they've set that in motion. It's just by talking. And you know that's what brings me to what I do. I know that this session isn't an introduction to me. Um, I'm doing what other people do. Hypnosis is conversation. And it's ideas. And other people's ideas sink into your mind. The words sink into your mind. And it affects us all. If that wasn't the case, then there would not be any television adverts. The first television adverts back in the 50s or 60s, probably the 50s, the advertising companies employed hypnotists in order to manipulate people with words, with visuals, with emotions, to get people emotionally connected to an idea, to a product. So that's what I'm doing. But I'm not trying to get you to buy a specific washing powder. I'm getting you to, or suggesting that you invest in you, that you put trust not in a specific car or brand of vehicle, but do you put trust in yourself and your own brain and your own mind and your own thoughts are just as valid as anybody else's. take a break there for you just to get in touch with how you feel. How do you feel right now? How do you feel about the idea of wearing that hat? And I realise that it might be uh, a little bit humorous because if you've made your own hat up, there might be a couple of monkeys on the top dancing with each other on top of a wedding cake, I don't know. You know, it might be a really big hat, but it might be a tiny, tiny little hat. Like a really miniature hat, you'd need a microscope to, to see it. But beliefs are strong no matter how big they are. Sometimes it's the ones you can't see You know, it's the beliefs, if you compare it to germs, you can't see the, can't see the really uh, harmful germs. They're invisible to the eye. Doesn't mean that they're harmless or not affecting us. Just like beliefs, other people's beliefs that maybe we don't see, maybe we just accept them because that's part of how we've lived, part of how we're expected or you feel that you're expected to think about things, about yourself. And don't you deserve to Give yourself some love. Show yourself some more kindness that will allow you to experience more of that freedom, more of that expansion, 
where you can actually decide for yourself what you choose to believe in. Because remember, beliefs, uh, it's like any other object, you know, that's made of wood or it's made of metal. It's created. A belief is a creation. It's just something that we believe in. Quite often without any thought, any intellectual involvement in that belief. And your happiness is more important than somebody else's opinion about how you should think and what you should believe and how you should live your life. So the question is, do you want to wear that hat? that somebody else has put on your head, that hat of limitations. And I'm not saying that all beliefs are limitations because they're not. But all beliefs that aren't studied and checked and verified and accepted and justified and understood perhaps could be limiting. It's about you giving yourself or you giving those beliefs permission to live inside your brain. You think of your brain as a, a club, you know, a special club, private club. And members can only be permitted by very, very, maybe a process of scrutiny, checking, making sure that the validity of those new want to be members of that club fit. and are congruent with the rest of your brain. Instead of just letting everything in, which I don't think many people do, but there's a lot of stuff in there that maybe we were too, when we were young, we were too young to, to question it because we weren't, didn't have the brain capacity to question things. We weren't developed enough, but we are now. You are now able to sift through some of it. To be with yourself, to be at peace with who you are and every day getting closer to being the person that you enjoy being, to being someone that you like, to be someone that you love. To be someone that you respect because you're actually being real to yourself and you're wearing your own hat which may be an invisible hat or it might be a big flowery hat 
covered in chocolate with a seagull sitting in a nest at the top. I don't know why the seagull, it's not really, I clearly have a fantasy of a hat with a seagull on for some reason. But that's your hat that you've made, your beliefs, your feelings. Something that you can work through yourself. getting in touch with how you feel right now how much more relaxed you feel in your body maybe noticing the parts of your body the muscles are possibly way more relaxed than they were before you started listening to me I know mine are. My arms are just hanging down at the side of me. Very loose and calm. And perhaps you can notice a calmness in your brain and in your mind. A degree of stillness. feeling of safety and you can notice what other feelings that you may be experiencing right now over the next few hours maybe something that I've said something that you've heard me say has resonated with you something useful something positive something that you enjoyed hearing something that you can relate to. Maybe it keeps coming back to you and you rehear it in your mind and you have that same feeling that you had when you heard me say it the first time. And it's those feelings that create a ripple in your timeline moving forward, making those changes, preparing you for more happiness, leading the way and building the foundations for your future happiness and safety. And that brings us to the end of this session. I'm going to count from one to three. I'm going to get to three. You can open your eyes if your eyes are closed. You can close your eyes if your eyes are open. You can blink your eyes if you want to blink them. You can look to the right, look to the left, look up and down. You can do a little dance, whatever you want to do. You can fall asleep or continue to be asleep if that's your choice. One. 
to becoming much more aware of your surroundings. Any background sounds, noticing your body and how relaxed and calm you feel in your body and your mind. And if you want to have something to laugh about for the rest of the day, open your eyes, have a little look at my funny beard. Three. Enjoy the rest of the day feeling wonderful. Lots of love. Bye.